Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Inside Gump. I'm Harry Donahue from Lulu Country Club right here in front of the Christmas tree at Lulu. And it adds a little bit of flavor to our final show of the year 2020. It's been quite a 12 months, hasn't it? But well, we hope to end it on a bright and shall we say holiday mood here on Inside Golf. Coming up on today's show, we're going to take a look at two gentlemen who were honored by the Philadelphia section of the PGA this year. One of them is Steve Frederick. Steve is the assistant pro at Overbrook Golf Club, and he was named the winner of the assistant pro of the year. We'll also introduce you to Charlie Schuler. Charlie is the director of golf at Saucon Valley Country Club, and he was this year's a winner of the Bill Strasbaugh Award. That award is given every year to the golf professional in the Philadelphia section who does the best job of mentoring his peer professionals. And we'll also have our teed off panel back with us again today. They'll be talking about if given the opportunity to design one golf hole, what kind of a golf course architect would they turn out to be? That should be interesting. So stay with us. It's a holiday show on the final show of 2020, right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirstteephiladelphia.org. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. And welcome back. Inside Golf continues with our final show of 2020. We're in a holiday mood in front of the Christmas tree here at the Grill at Lulu Country Club. It's time to meet Steve Frederick. Steve Frederick is the assistant pro at Overbrook Golf Club. And in 2020, he was named the assistant pro of the year by the Philadelphia section of the PGA. Uh, winning this award was really special um, to follow in the footsteps of not only one of my coworkers, Ashley, but two of my best friends, Justin Regal and Brian Kinky, meant a lot to me, um, especially this year with what happened with Justin. Um, but uh, now it's just an honor. Um, it's been a privilege to represent the PAO um, as the co-chair for the last several years. Um, but to win this award really kind of was, was really special um, to be recognized for that. And like I said, to be recognized with some of my close friends. I think the assistants mean a lot to what we do. Um, and having worked for some, some really great head professionals who have been supportive of that, um, we get to play a little bit, but we also get to know each other. Um, one of our best events that we have every year is our Indy Cup, where we play against the Mid-Atlantic. And it's just a, that's how I got this job that I'm in now, because um, I met Ashley and, and Pat Buckus. Otherwise, I don't know if I'd be at Overbrook. So it, it's, I tell everybody every year at our meeting that you know, it's important to play golf. That's one thing that's kind of why we got in this business, but it's also important to build relationships and build friendships. Um, you might get a job, you might meet somebody that becomes a lifelong friend. You might, uh, you might meet your next employer. Um, there's young guys out there that are just getting in the business and then there's guys who are getting head pro jobs and that's how you move on and how you get another job is by networking. And to me, that's the biggest important thing about the PAO is the network that we create amongst the assistants um, kind of a 
you know, it's tough to, to walk up to a head pro that's been around for 30 years and, and introduce yourself, where if you're playing golf with an assistant who's on your level, it's a little bit easier. My time here at Overbrook has been awesome. It's been uh, great. Eric's assembled a great staff here. Uh, it's part of the reason I chose to come down here. And I get to do everything. Eric basically lets me run the operation. Um, I am his you know, first guy in charge as far as you know, making decisions. He tells me, you make a decision, I'm gonna stand behind it. So he's, he's definitely getting me ready for a head pro job, which is important. And he has a great track record of that. Um, I get to teach. We have an indoor track man room that we use all year round. Um, get to fit a lot uh, this year, especially with, with people getting into the game. Done a ton of, of fittings. And we get to play. Uh, we have a strong playing tradition here. Um, most of our you know, assistants are great players. Eric's a great player. So he encourages us to get out and play, play in tournaments, play with members. And the membership wants us to play. They love seeing us out there and having us in their groups. Getting involved with your membership and engaging them in what you're doing, um, it's all about building relationships. And again, it goes back to networking. You gotta network with your members. So if you're comfortable playing in a golf tournament with some other assistants or people you don't know, you can be very comfortable. That helps you get comfortable playing with members and building those relationships. Um, I look at my time here, I've been here two years and I've built some great relationships that, you know, I think as a young professional I might not have done, I have some experience, but I kind of have brought along some of our younger professionals and I encourage guys to do that. Get out, play with your members, start teaching. Um, one great thing that you know, Wayne Phillips, my boss at Lehigh did was we would just go up on the range on a Saturday and, and walk the line, which is I know kind of an old school thing, but it gets you out there, you get to meet the members, you get to you know, shake hands and, and ask them about their family, ask them about what's going on. Uh, one thing I try not to do is ask a member how they played because it may not have been a good experience because their game wasn't great. But I always try and ask them something like, how are the kids? You know, how was your vacation? How was, you know, how was this? You know, try and engage them other than just golf when they're around the club because they're here to relax um, and golf is part of that. But golf may not be the most relaxing thing of their day. So try and get them to smile. Try and get them to think about something other than golf. Yeah, I'd like to thank um, Chip Richter and uh, he nominated me for the award, and so I appreciate that and being recognized. Um, obviously, I'd love to thank Eric, and then the rest of the staff, Ashley, Dave, Matt, Trevor, uh, Lisa, our shop manager, I'll get in trouble if I don't thank her, and Chad, our caddy master. They support me, um, I support them, and without that team atmosphere, I wouldn't have won this award. Um, I'd love to thank uh, my past bosses, Wayne Phillips, Kevin Edwards, Jamie Komenchek, um, for bringing me along. Uh, Jamie was one of the people that got that told me to get involved because uh, he was a young assistant at one point and he got involved. So that's kind of how I started seven, eight years ago. And then uh, my wife, um, she without her, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Um, so her support is uh, unwaving. She is uh, she puts up with my long hours and my weekends and stuff like that. But uh, you know, in the end, she loves what I do and she's really proud of what this award. And congratulations to Steve Frederick, the assistant pro at Overbrook Golf Club. Stay with us, coming up next here on Inside Golf, we're handing out more awards and introducing another award winner. This time we go up to Saucon Valley in Bethlehem, where the director of golf, Charlie Schuler, was named the winner of the Bill Strasball Award. He was the mentor of the year to his fellow professionals in the Philadelphia section. That I carry with me every day and appreciation for those um, that have really helped shape me into who I am today. Students in our program learn a lot about leadership and how to become a we leader. Have a good cause. We've got great kids and people. It, it teaches young people not only golf but the life lessons that golf teaches us. I've been a better person throughout my um, career in golf. We're teaching kids how to be better kids, how to be better people and to build better communities. Respect, honesty, courtesy, integrity, judgment. Not only does it give kids a jump start on the game of golf but maybe a little bit of a jump start on the game of life.
Welcome back. Inside Golf continues in a festive mood, needless to say, in front of the Christmas tree as we celebrate the holiday at Lulu Country Club. Talking about celebrate, let's uh, celebrate an award winner this year in the Philadelphia section of the PGA. His name is Charlie Schuler, and he's director of golf at Saucon Valley Country Club. This award, specific, award specifically means to me uh, so much. Uh, I'm so thankful to my parents and, and my brother um, who have meant so much to me and mean so much to me in my life, in my development, certainly in my earlier uh, years and, and childhood. Okay. Um, based on this, this award's meaning of, of mentoring others, I'm just so thankful for, first for my immediate family who really uh, have helped shape me into the person I am today and uh, thank them uh, so much. And of course my wife Lauren uh, is a remarkable person. Uh, she's been an incredible support system behind uh, every effort that we make as golf professionals for our membership and for our staff and in this particular case. But uh, it's a, overall, uh, it's a great thankfulness that I carry with me every day and appreciation for those um, that have really helped shape me into who I am today. I was very fortunate to work for some great golf professionals and people and what I noticed early on is that each of these professionals focused so much on the individual's development. They were willing to have the difficult conversation uh, to open up a greater meaning behind being a golf professional and who we are as people for our memberships or for our community or for our family. Uh, and I've always been reminded of that um, now in a position and have been for, for a few years um, where that's my responsibility. Um, and I've taken it very seriously as a result because I see how impactful it was. You're never better than your team uh, when it comes to your, your own schedule. Uh, and that message was driven uh, home there in a great way. Golf is such a great uh, avenue for, for relationship building. Um, actually just came off the golf course this morning with our club president and a couple other uh, officials and we had the same comment of what an amazing sport uh, in such a unique year. Um, golf affords that personal time uh, and in the industry uh, four hours on the golf course or three hours and 45 minutes um, is that amazing time so I've made it a point to try to play golf with as many former assistants uh, that I've worked with. Pros for Clothes Foundation uh, is an idea that, that really started uh, my wife and I were working at Bonita Bay Club at the time um, in Naples, Florida and we had moved the same box of shirts uh, back and forth from Baltusrol to Bonita Bay. And 20 hours in the car, um, we realized this, this box had traveled some mileage and it could do a lot better um, going to someone who needed that clothing. At that moment, I realized there were 20,000 golf professionals that likely had a similar box somewhere. And it quickly blossomed from there. Um, since then, we've, we've been a fully functioning uh, nonprofit. We've reached over 220,000 pounds of clothing donated to people in need within the United States, around the world. Um, and now more than ever, um, we are supporting uh, natural disaster relief efforts, um, hurricanes, forest fires. Um, so we're able to send clothing to those communities to then outfit those in, in need. Uh, so we're, we're growing. We, we're very pleased to share. We just uh, brought on our first employee. So we've, we've been around 10 years um, and intentionally we wanted to keep a very low uh, overhead and essentially no overhead. Um, but we've grown to a point where we needed some support and Lisa Raley is our executive director now and, and she's taking us to another level and we've got some pretty large um, ideas in mind. I'll start with my teammates um, here at, at Saucon Valley and, and really Every, every place I've ever worked, um, uh, we spend more time at our places of business than we do with our own families. And that comes at a great sacrifice. Uh, but if there's anything in this world that can make up for that sacrifice, it, it's the relationships that we end up building. So I'm going to start with Saucon Valley. Uh, the team here has just been incredibly welcoming from the membership uh, side as its new golf professional to the staff side uh, welcoming me. Um, so I just can't thank my teammates enough here. Um, you can have a great coach, but I think you're only as good as your players. Um, so the players need to get credit. Uh, so Mike Wood, our head golf professional, Chris Duckett, senior assistant, Ross Holtzclaw, assistant professional. Of course, we have a very large team, but that's our core group of professionals full-time 
but uh, thank you yeah. to the many golf yeah, professionals right. um, yeah. out there yeah. that, that I've come to know and those that I don't know that are doing the same work that I'm doing. So, um, but I appreciate that, that chance to thank everyone. Well, thanks, Charlie, and congratulations, and good luck with your charity, Pros for Clothes. All right, stay with us. More to come here from Lulu with our teed off panel. We're going to give them the chance to be a golf course architect, not for 18 holes, but just one hole. And they're going to tell us what it would look like. That's next on Inside Golf. The term I was thinking of was an executive course that's like 4,500 yards, short par fours. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues as we prepare to celebrate New Year with you. Here comes 20. 21 and we are at Lulu Country Club in Upper Dublin, Montgomery County. And if you want to know more about Lulu and golf all over Montgomery County, where they have dozens and dozens of golf courses, go to this website, valleyforge.org. Click on Montco Golf. With us again today, Lila Mackey. She is the foundation director of the Philadelphia section, PGA of America. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Great to be here. Great to see you. Joe Logan, he has celebrated a lot of New Year's. He's back to celebrate another one with us today. Joe is with MyPhillyGolf.com. And the new president of the Golf Association of Philadelphia. He's going to have quite a new year and 2021 is special for Mr. Oscar Mestre. Congratulations. Thank Good you. Good to see you again. Thank you. Great to see you, Harry. You know, you're a great golfer. You're now a big administrator with the, the oldest golf association in the country. Have you ever thought of, of being a golf course architect, maybe for one day? Have you ever even given that thought? I truly have not. Okay. But, uh, you know, in, uh, it, as we were having this discussion or preparing for this discussion, I would say that, you know, I, I feel like I'm traditional in every part of my life and every part of my golfing life especially. So if I were to design a course, if I could be architect for a day, there's so many great golf courses that I wouldn't want to compete with the great golf course. I'm not, I'm not going to try to outdo them. But what I would like to do is capitalize on the growth of the game caused by the pandemic. We have a lot of people coming to this game. We have to have, in my, in my estimation, I would design a fan, uh, you know, golfer friendly starter golf course so that it could be played, you know, with fun, faster, easier, maybe shorter probably too, and be kind of a minor league development, you know, farm system to then fulfilling memberships at all these great golf clubs that we have in the Golf Association of Philadelphia. And, that, and I think we need to just get people introduced to the game as we saw happen this year, just because it was the only game in town. It was outdoors, it's healthy. You know, good spacious room, uh, areas between us. I, I, that that would be what I would do if I uh, if I were an architect. Leela, a few years ago, didn't the PGA have a yeah, take it forward uh, campaign where you know, Tee hey, forward. be realistic and how far you can hit your tee shot. You know, don't worry about playing everything from the tips. And yeah. Along Oscar's, that's a great idea. What he just said. About yeah. Capitalize on maybe some of the new golfers that are now with us uh, after last year. Uh, what? Uh, what would you do if you had a chance? Would you go similar to Oscar, or what other ideas would you come up with in terms of designing an 18-hole golf course? Um, I would actually agree with a lot of what Oscar just said. Um, I would do, you know, having given it that much study, there was not something I looked at doing. But um, I think something like a Palm Beach Par Three. I don't know if anybody's played Palm Beach Par Three, but it's really fun. It's a longer part. It's not super short, but it's, so it's got a couple of par fours. But um, you know, lengthy par threes and it's on the water and just something that's kind of, yeah, like a bunny slope type level to an 18 hole full, um, you know, long golf course would be really fun to do. And then you can kind of capture that, that social and intermediate group of golfers on their way to playing championship level golf courses. Yeah. Joe, I save this for you because I know you know the history. There's two guys that know more about golf than any 22 people I know. Pete Trenum is one and Joe Logan's the other. So I, when thinking about this uh, topic, said, why do we have to have sand bunkers on a golf course? You know, why not play 18 holes without any sand? And you told me when I told you that my idea, 
well, don't you know the history of sand bottles? Go ahead, <laughs> share with it, everybody who doesn't know, like me, we're asking where about, it all came from. You know, where the bunkers come from and where they came from was, you know, in Scotland and in the old days, these lynx courses right by the ocean, the, the wind would blow in and the sheep would go curl up on the other side of the dunes and they would curl up and it would eventually wear through the, the grass and to the sand below and creating you know bunkers that have become part of the game. That is the kind of information you get no place else when it comes <laughs> to the game of golf, but I appreciate that. Well, my okay, now, getting back to my well, idea. Do we still have to have, we don't have any sheep, I don't see any out here at Lulu today. Do we still have to have sandbox? Why not design a course without any sandbox? Well, as I also told you when we were talking earlier, I, I've actually played courses, if they had no bunkers, maybe they had a couple, but little flat, crummy little nowhere bunkers, but it was a maintenance and a cost issue. It was just a, a course that couldn't afford to, to keep them. Um, but as for your other question, it's amazing, great minds think alike. I was thinking exactly the same thing. The term I was thinking of was an executive course that's like 4,500 yards, short par fours that, that families can go to. That's how you keep some of these people who have rejoined the game or come to the game. They don't have four or five hours. They don't have all day. They want to go out, have fun, play three hours maybe, and be done with it. Uh, the other thing, you mentioned a par three course. There are courses that aren't just little chip and putt par threes. Yeah. There we used to be one on 309. I think it was Cedar Brook that was, had at one point been an 18 old course, but they turned it into a par three, but they were nice long par threes. I mean, I mean like two irons and you'd, you'd hit a pitching wedge, and that's all a, a, you know, a hybrid or whatever. We need more of the courses like starter courses, like you called them, long par threes to, we, we don't need another 7,000 yard, uh, you know, beast of a course. Okay, how, I'll go around a radical idea. Have you ever played a golf course without a par three? Without a par three, I don't believe so, no. So if you haven't, it probably doesn't exist. W would you be interested in playing a golf course without a par three? Because if you are, you should design it. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> well, asking. It would, be it would be counter to what I just described. It would. I, I think that in the starter, in the starter category, distance is, is a barrier to entry. You know, there's nothing more, um, you know, uh, put off-putting than that person who just feels like, oh my gosh, I just can't ever get there. So, you know, creating ease of, of, of getting to your target by the tees that we now use, starting in the middle of the fairway to introduce the kids to the game, I think is awesome. So, um, I think people enjoy the break of distance. So, you know, some of our favorite par threes and holes are, are shorter, um, where, no matter the skill level or the strength level, everybody feels like they have a chance. So I would, I would say probably would not interest me not to have par threes, but if you want it, I'll design it for you. Just design it and <laughs> I'll take a look. Uh, eight inch holes, they're, they're around, right? Don't they play some tournaments with eight inch holes? Oh Maybe yeah. Juniors sometimes, yeah. yeah. They are. W um, would that help, do you think, get people? Yeah, you, know, you talk about take distance yeah. out of the game. Put another four inches in the uh, diameter of a of a hole. Maybe uh, that would get people interested. Yeah, I, I think know. that's a good fun training aid, but I don't think you know. I it's think not going to watch for. Holes no, holes if I was holes. designing a golf course, I would not. That would not be something I would I would use. Okay. A anything else, Joe? Well, let's see. So my idea of no par threes. How about no par? All par fours. Would you be like that? Talk about sure, distance. I like, love short par fours. That's yeah. my, my new fun thing is, I, I mean, because to me that takes real creativity for architects to come up with not a lot of yardage, but an interesting tee shot and a, and a, a second shot one. that tests I'll everything. give you one. I don't know if you've played it yet or anybody has been down to Union League Nationals eighth hole on one of their nines uphill about 315 to Dana Fry into his mountain there. That's one of the greatest short par fours I've ever seen. Have you played it? I've not played it. I've not played it. That means you want an invite. I'm coming down next <laughs> summer. Let's get the date. <laughs> Mark it on your four. calendar. All right. That's it for Teed Off, and we'll be back. More of Inside Golf. They're not just familiar faces. They're your friends and neighbors. It's their small businesses, a beating heart that makes a neighborhood a home. The places with a pick-me-up. 
or a story that inspires, where you can share a taste of comfort with a personal touch that makes our world shine a little brighter. Support small and make a big difference. Make it local. Make it Main Street. Make it Monco. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Once again, congratulations to Steve Frederick and Charlie Schuler. And this is our final show for 2020. It's been quite a year. It's been quite a run for Inside Golf here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Because when we come back in the new year, 2021, it will be the 24th year, 24 consecutive years of Inside Golf here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. It is the longest continuous series on NBC Sports Philadelphia. And we have a lot of people to thank for that. All the people who have contributed to the show and probably right at the top of the list are viewers. You that have been watching, maybe not for all 24 years, but certainly a long time of Inside Golf on NBC Sports Philadelphia. A very, very happy holiday season to you. And I'm sure we're all hoping for a better year for all in 2021. I'm Harry Donahue, speaking for our producer all those 24 years, Ken Selinger. We want to wish you a very, very happy new year. And remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. We won't be in 2021. We'll see you next time here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirstteephiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. Buy Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company. Quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA. Experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional.